Hey guys, Clint here with Classic Firearms, and we've got Matt back today. What's up, guys? And you know what? We're pretty excited about what Absolutely. we've got yeah. in this box. Last time we did an unboxing, it was pretty cool. We yeah. had some Carcano uh, Calvary rifles, right? That's right. And now we've got something, too, that's a carbine, yep. semi-auto, yep. 30 carbine, mm -hmm. and one carbine. That's right. Let's take a look at these guys really quick here. I am very excited about this, because Matt, did you know that the first rifle I ever shot was an M1 carbine? You've mentioned that before. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I still have that one in my safe. It, it was a, uh, or is, an Underwood M1 that I think was made late in 43, I think. And now we've got a mixture of Underwood, Inland, and maybe a few other U.S. manufacturers. So first off, there was like, what, Rockola, mm -hmm. National Postal Meter. Mm -hmm. IBM. Um, IBM, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then some, and some weird farm equipment stuff like yeah. uh, National Union Ho or something. Something like that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, tool. I think fork it was like Fork and yeah. Ho, that's yeah. what it was, yeah. But uh, anyway, guys, check these things out. I'm just gonna go for this one right here. Uh, first thing I'm gonna go ahead and say is not all of these are gonna come with a sling. All right, some of them will, some of them won't. Uh, but check this guy out here. First one we got is an Inland. And what's neat about two on the uh, barrel manufacturer, the barrel stamp on this one, it says Inland Manufacturing or Manufacturer Division, uh, General Motors 1043. Try to show that off the best that we can right there. So pretty sweet. So a 1943 manufactured in the month of October M1 carbine here. And I absolutely love these rifles. Now, something too that I understand is all the ones that we have are going to ship with a bayonet lug, right? Yeah, I, I my understanding as well that they should all have their original military bayonet lugs. These are original, you know, 1940s production, you know, real M1 carvings. They're not after uh, later reproductions or anything. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. And so something right away too. Some of the stocks may not be original. I'm looking at this blonde one here. I'm not sure, but what I'm looking for, the, the uh, stock markings, things like that. This one, it's either very light or just completely worn, but it does have a P marking right back here on the grip. Very cool. And it looks like they are going to ship with one, what is a 15 round mag? Yep. Nice. So uh, this rifle I'm holding is also an inland, um, and it's got an inland barrel as well. And this is from uh, what would be July of 44. Nice. So you know you can see uh, you know there is some some dings, nicks, dents. Of course, these things are you know, seventy years old. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but you know the actions. Are, yeah. I mean you yeah. can't beat that, right? No. And dude. of course you have that little push button to hold your bolt uh, open. So that's a really cool feature. Um, yeah. I mean there's just something that's really cool about M1 carbines. Like they're yeah. short, light, handy. Oh yeah. And uh, I mean it's kind of like you know the first pistol caliber carbine. You know, kind of, kind of an idea. You know, right. You know, it's a, it's an original PDW. You know, they were designed for people who weren't going to be holding full Garand rifles and stuff. Right. But replace the, the 45 1911 as a defensive weapon. Right. And something I noticed too about this one, talking about stock markings, is something that I haven't typically seen. Usually, I see like the Springfield Ordnance Wheel and like an inspector stamp. But on this one here, I've just got MRD. So I don't know if those are initials uh, by maybe the person carrying this or whatever else. But I don't know. Pretty cool though. I don't see any stock markings on this one except for there is a P mark here in the pistol grip area. So, I mean, I, other than that, I don't see any markings, but yeah. it's a very nice lighter color stock there. Yep. And so, of course, we're also noticing variations in bluing. So, like the bluing on the barrel looks pretty good on this guy, but back here on the receiver looks a little worn. But I don't think that really takes away from it at all in my honest opinion. However, we are going to have hand slots available, right? Of course, yeah. Yep. So if you are looking for that best cosmetically out of 10, what we'll do is what our pickers will do. We'll go ahead and pretty much sort these guys. Uh, we'll have 10 of them kind of laying out like this right here, and then they'll look over all the cosmetic condition and then select the best looking one out of that. Um, something else I want to mention too is the stock on this guy. It's fatter. It's fatter than, uh, you know, like this one. Notice how this one's a little bit more slim compared to this guy. Do you know anything behind that? So there's actually four different types of M1 carving stocks. Yeah. Um, so you had, you know, t early type ones, two, three, four. And so the ones that are, are really fat, that are called pot belly stocks, are yeah. the type fours. And basically they were designed as a reinforced stock for the M2 select fire carvings. Oh. But they were commonly, you know, used to replace stocks on M1s or yeah. 
know, so you will notice that, uh, you know, there's a mixture of stocks. Uh, you can see here how thin this cutout here is in the upper receiver. So that's usually indicative of a pretty early stock that the wood is only relieved on the, on the upper handguard, yeah. as opposed to if we look here where the wood is relieved on both the upper and lower part of the stock. Right. Um, so that's a, a great indicator. And again, you know, when you get that kind of fatter, you know, stock that comes down, you know, that's, that's yep. a later stock, you know, probably a, a type four. Um, gotcha. So I see variations in the stocks available here. Uh, we don't have a an option to select for that, but yeah. you know it's it's good to see that you know you can it's kind available. of yeah. it's there. Um, now looking at this rifle, uh, it looks like the receiver and barrel are marked underwood, and uh, this one has that nice bomb insignia here on the barrel. So that's an ordnance acceptance mark. Another thing we want to mention, uh, you know, is because of the variety of years of production, like this one says it's a 1943, December of 1943, um, the, the trigger groups will vary. Um, so, you know, the original trigger groups were fully milled and then they went to a three component brazed together trigger group. Yeah. So the copper brazing they use does oxidize so it can kind of blend in, it gets dark and, uh, and you might not be able to see it until you clean it, but you'd actually see the different parts of the trigger uh, braised together the lines of copper. That's that's not a repair. That's how they were originally manufactured. Right. Um, now this one looks like it's you know probably a uh, a cast trigger group. So after uh, 43 and 44 when they were using those braised groups, you know they went to a cast trigger group. Gotcha. Very cool. Yep. And so we'll show you guys a condition of a couple more here and just how cool these rifles are. Because my uh, great uncle when he was a Marine in World War II during the Pacific Theater, this is what he carried around, him and a bunch of guys, yeah. you know? And I, he was also, I, I wish I remembered the actual division name now, but they were like the only unit that was created and disbanded off of the United States hmm. or offshore, which I thought was kind of interesting. But anyway, yeah, really cool things, guys. And this one's got some marking. Well, first off, we've got the P mark right here in the grip again. And then right over here, it looks like we got like AAR, AAP maybe, something like that. It's gonna be real difficult to pick up, I think, but just a subtle marking. But the wood on this one looks really good. Love the grain and everything else in it. Nice. Um, so this one's interesting. I, I'm not sure if it'll show up that well. You do have a Springfield Armory mark here on the stock. Not sure if that's going to be super visible. The lighting out here is not that great today. Um, we also have the P mark in a circle here in the pistol grip area, and this one's kind of a, a mixed components. So we have a, an inland uh, receiver, but an underwood barrel. Again, it's got that nice bomb uh, acceptance mark. But uh, yeah, you know, I love the uh, M1 carving. Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, I don't know if y'all know Max Brooks. He he wrote. Uh, zombie survival guide yeah and uh, world war z and so the m1 carbine is actually a rifle he recommends for the zombie apocalypse well it makes sense right so yeah. it's super lightweight and it's very light recoiling mm -hmm. rifle as well but still has enough punch to take down you know your target yeah and uh but again it's not like a over penetrating round like i said it's not real big and heavy not a super high velocity round but like i said you can carry a lot of that so before like the m16 with the 556 caliber this was kind of like the go-to carbine that was lightweight still had the wood stock and all before we got into all the big plastic stuff yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know this is just overall a great carry rifle and then on top of that if you needed to you got a bayonet lock there you go <laughs> um so i really love the rear sight on m1 carvings as well yeah. so you know you can see it's easily adjustable just by pushing through these little detent positions yep. so that's your your elevation and you know it goes all the way from uh 200 yards back here up to i think it's 600 yards at the very back mm -hmm. and then this uh, nice knurled knob lets you adjust the windage. It pulls it side to side, so it's very easy to adjust. You can definitely do that on the fly. Right. Um, but it, you know that peep sight makes it really an, an accurate, you know, rifle. Yes, it does, and it's easy to use too. Like I said, light recoiling, safety on this guy as well. Uh, right now, it is in the fire position. Flipping it down, it is in safe. Just to show you guys really quick, safe, and then flipping it back towards you, fire. And I think the uh, the idea behind this was which way the bullet was traveling, so it's going to face par parallel to the barrel, versus when it's perpendicular, you know it's not going to travel. Hmm. There you go. Um, yeah, like you said, everyone will uh, come with one 15 round mag. Of course, they did produce 30 round mags for the M2 that could yep. be used with any of the M1 carbines as well. And we've got, um, I think, a, a numerous amounts of uh, actual magazines available on our yeah, site. Yeah, you should too, be able to so find extra mags on our site as well as ammo. You know, we we have. Uh, that Korean 30 caliber ammo that's yep. available by the can. 
Yep. So, you know, if you're looking for something to feed one of these, that's definitely something we got you covered on as well. Right, and we also too have oilers and slings available as well, reproduction slings. So if you guys are in the market for some oilers, slings, ammo, we've got you covered all day with the M1s here. So, I mean, I'm, cool. it, it's really exciting, man. I mean, these are fantastic looking, you know, vintage American firearms. Oh yeah. And uh, I mean, I think that it would be something that just about anyone should like to add to their collection. Right, absolutely. Now this one's kind of special to me. So it's got an inland receiver, but a Rockola barrel. And Rockola, they were known for jukeboxes, That's which right. is pretty cool. But everybody was involved in the war effort during that time. And it's just amazing it is. when you when you think about like, you know, a technology company, IBM, making M1 carbines, a jukebox company, Singer sewing machine was making rifles. Yeah. You know, it's, it's nuts. And again, like there's a, like National Fork and Hoe or Union Fork and Hoe, you know, those are right. farm equipment places. Yeah. Like really, you know, the, the takeaway is that, you know, the country really came together to focus on supporting the soldiers in the war effort. And right. It was really like a total kind of societal influence. Yep. Um, Got another obviously, one that's uh, inland and underwood. Obviously, yeah. this one has a mismatched uh, handguard, so some of these are gonna, you know, have some kind of mismatched parts. Uh, but right. Yeah, and I, well, and I would also consider these probably turn-in condition, right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. You know, so you know, who knows how you know <laughs> mistreated some of these were? Maybe a broken stock, something like that, and then it was you know completely refinished or remade, uh, you know, at the arsenal. But man, these things are just so sweet, guys. So breaking into the next layer to see what we got here. I uh, kind of immediately get drawn to this kind of medium colored stock. It's got this cool rack number painted oh, yeah. on here. That is a pretty one. Looking for any markings here. Um, you know, again, you're going to see things like dings and dents and stuff. So it looks like maybe that was from a charging handle during transport or storage. Right. But. Uh, yeah, man, I mean, still, it looks like a, it's in pretty good shape as far as, you know, standing up to use. Now, I, I like, so I like the fact that like this, what you call the pot belly stock here mm -hmm. was designed for the M2, which is pretty much a select fire, the full auto version of the M1 carbine. But I really like the feel of the kind of that, the original, yeah. the thinner stock. Yeah. yeah, I would say, you know, there's just something about the way that, you know, you can get your hand around there that's just really nice. Um, uh, one of the things that's interesting about the difference between the M1 and the M2 was that there was no actual changes to like the receiver. Yeah. So all of the parts are kind of like auxiliary parts that got added. Oh wow. Um, so you know, it's very interesting because you can't distinguish between an M1 receiver and an M2 uh, receiver. Right. Gotcha. Cool. These things, guys, are just very cool. Love that M1 action and everything else about these. They do not feature a last round bolt hold open. Uh, they, I don't know if there's any magazines that are out there that... I don't think I've heard of a yeah, last round As far as I know, on an M1 carbine, but like Matt said, you got this little button right here and you can lock it back just by pulling this back and pushing down on the button and now it's locked back. Yeah, that's, and since it doesn't matter whether the mag's in or not, it's a great feature for ranges where they want you to yeah. show clear, leave things on the table and the range is cold or something. Right. You know, you don't have to have an empty mag or anything to lock it. You can just at any time pull it back and lock it. Yeah, exactly. Um, of course, the operating system of this is really cool. Yeah. So basically here under the handguard, there is a, a tap it. So it's basically kind of like a gas piston that only moves like four millimeters. Yeah. And in that distance, that travel is all the force it needs to impact on your operating rod and send the whole thing coming back. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's really a cool, simple operating system. Speaking of simple, like disassembling this thing is the oh, simplest thing since oh, yeah. anything, yeah. right? You got one screw here at the back of the receiver, yep. and then you have your screw here at, yeah, your, your, at your barrel, barrel band. band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's that's basically it. Yeah, and then from there, you know your bayonet lug will fall off, things like that too. Yeah, you can slide the, the, yeah, you know, the slides the, out, but you have the, the front side post. Yeah, yeah, that bayonet is attached to this front barrel band. You just mm -hmm. slide that assembly forward, you'll take the upper guard off, and you'll be able to lift that action right out of the stock. I mean, the simplest things to, to get in there and clean, uh, you know, I really can't say enough about good things about the Elon Carbine. I think it's just a, a really cool, fantastic rifle. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned like zombies earlier. In The Walking Dead, uh, I can't remember the one character's name, but he was carrying around an M1 carbine for the longest time yeah. before he eventually was taken out. Uh, but this was early in the season. It's not a spoiler alert, all right? Early in the show. Uh, something else too, I'm noticing that AAM on the stock on this guy now. And it looks like we've got an IBM barrel on this one. Pretty neat and it looks like an inland receiver. It's sometimes a little difficult to actually see the receiver marking because the rear sight kind of covers it up a little bit, but this is a very looking one. Again, that AAM marking right back here with an IBM barrel, and if you guys want to see what that looks like, yeah, maybe it'll show up some. The placement of that uh, serial number and the manufacturer mark is kind of yeah, peculiar. Right. Uh, but very cool. Man, these things are just 
so sweet, guys. Definitely a fan of the M1 carbine. Again, it definitely has a, you know, I've got a soft spot for M1s yeah. because, you know, like I said, as a kid, this was, this was my plinker growing up, you know? If it wasn't, you know, one of my Henry 22s or, you know, a 1022, my dad let me advance to the M1 carbine, but before he even let me shoot anything, he goes, hey, go shoot this guy, you know? It's like, all right, and you know, the cool part was your great uncle carried this in World War II, and it's like, that's sweet, man. Yeah, yeah man, it's, it's pretty a cool. great personal connection to have some. Oh, yeah. And it's one of those things about firearms that, you know, we don't talk about here so much, but, yeah. you know, firearms are a great, like, family uh, inheritance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so you have, you know, uh, firearms that are passed through families for generations, and they take on a very special sentimental, uh, yeah. you know, importance that the monetary value doesn't touch. And so, right. you know, obviously, we love collecting, you know, surplus firearms because of their history, but having a family connection is even oh, better. Yeah. Right, absolutely. And of course, being, uh, you know, in this country here, <laughs> you know, kind of like born through the use of firearms and everything else. Heck yeah, that's pretty sweet stuff. So cool stuff, guys. All right, I think we've shown off enough of these M1s here. We've got a few of them for you guys to get your hands on. Again, if you're feeling lucky, you know, and you want that best looking one, go ahead and hit up that hand select option. And of course, we have our M130 30 carbine ammo available for you guys. Also of accessories, magazines, slings, oilers, things like that. So check it out. Don't miss out on uh, some pretty cool historic firearms like these. Absolutely. Last firearm I'm going to talk about, I mentioned the M16 earlier. Yep. We've got a Knight's Armament that we're currently giving away. A Knight's Armament AR-15. This one does not have a, oh wait, it does have not a third position, but a paddle because it's got a Fostec Echo Sport Trigger on it and a Trigicon ACOG. This thing's a heck of a lot of fun and your entries are absolutely free. You just gotta go to classicfirearms.com, hit that top banner, and then it's gonna take you to a page to get all of your entries. So don't miss out on that guy. Yeah. Matt, any final thoughts? No, just remember that your absolute best way to get entries is gonna be referring friends. That's gonna give you your biggest bang for your buck. So right. if you don't have friends that are gonna, you know, click on your link for you, you need better friends. You need better friends. Go to the range, make some friends, tell them you have the chance to win like a $3,000 setup and they might, you know, might be all about that. That's right. Know. All right, I'm gonna leave it off there, guys. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. We'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.